hopefully you did enjoy that segment. Huawei do put on some incredible graphics, don't they? So oh, they welcome, do, yeah. welcome back to the Barrett Channel today. We have been brought to Shanghai once again by Huawei um, to a, an event here uh, where they are showcasing some uh, real life 5G and AI applications because I think most people don't most people think that the 5G is kind of just faster speeds to your Download phone. Download on your phone, yeah. But there's a hell of a lot more to it and it's really going to be kind of a revolution. Yeah, re really download speeds on your phone is just the tip of the iceberg, really. It's the bigger applications are in industry and, and uh, you know, sort of operating in industrial scenarios. And remote control yeah. operating okay. and manufacturing and all these kinds of things. And we're in an exhibition hall here where they are uh, showcasing some of those applications. And we're just gonna go into a few and talk to you about them. So stick with us for the whole video. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we get up to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of the, the big areas where, where this 5G, because it's got low latency, you can pretty much have almost real time, high definition video um, transmission. Um, and this allows that so if you look at this model here these are this is a, a simulation of a coal mine and previously a lot of people worked in, in mines to drive sort of stuff like this around and this is obviously a cutter at the coal face you've got conveyors and previously there'd be a lot of people working in it it's obviously a very dangerous environment but by deploying um, a 5G, now in a mine you have to de deploy a special kind of 5G. Um, it's a kind of lower power 5G because of, you know, risks of spark and fire. There's a lot of gas in mines and that. But it means things like this now can all be done by remote control. They don't actually have drivers in there. So all this machinery can, can pretty much be um, used by remote control then. The actual operators will sit in an office similar to this. And the, the, the best way I can describe this, it's like a video game. Yeah, where I think, you actually sit in front of a terminal with like joysticks and buttons. Oh, we've seen it before, haven't we? <laughs> we have, yeah. We've, um, uh, we've been to exhibitions before. Actually, I'll link a video up here where you can go and check it out because we've seen them doing that in action. Um, not for a coal mine, that one was for something else. Uh, we actually saw it at the, the Sunwood factory as well with one of their estimates. Oh yeah, well you had a go at it. They, yeah. they, they also make mining equipment, but it just means that, you know, rather than being sort of potentially hundreds of metres underground in dangerous environments where there could be gases and things like that, these operators now sit in a comfortable air-conditioned office and uh, actually control all the machinery from there and interesting in the keynote they were talking about a port application where uh, drivers in gantry cranes were finding they had lots of health issues because of the you know they had to sort of sit in these cranes all day with their head bent forward looking down and they were finding it more and more difficult to recruit crane drivers because people just didn't want to do that job and he was saying especially young people they don't want to do these kind of difficult jobs anymore whereas now these, these same operators can sit in a nice, comfortable, air-conditioned office. They, they don't have anywhere near the, the problem in recruiting people to do it because it's, it's kind of like an office job rather than a, a job where you get dirty and, and you're on site. So that's made a huge difference. And um, if you just, just look here on, on the, the TV, this is where, you know, this is how operators sit. This is actually a, a port where they're unloading um, containers from ships. Yeah, so let's uh, just mention that this is not just for coal mines. You can, this yeah. is for everything you can imagine, you know, ports, um, you know, construction sites, um, and then even even indoor work, um, like, you know, surgeries and things yeah, like that yeah. will become possible. But certainly at things like ports and mines, the, the big aspect is safety, because if you can imagine a port where there's literally tens, if not hundreds of containers whizzing around on big cranes. You know, that's a pretty dangerous environment to be in. So the less people that are in um, that environment, the less chance of being accidents. So there's a massive safety um, issue here uh, where 5G actually makes the environment way, way safer than it would normally be. Let's move on to a, a different one. Yeah. Um, we can have a look at this one. You could, you could have a little demo on this one um, again. 
Yeah, so this, this is, is... Go on. This is a, a consulting room, and you can basically get a, an online consultation. And basically, you put these, these glasses on, and it, it's not hooked up at the moment, but when we tried it, it's basically like you're sitting in the consulting room with the doctor or the nurse and, and you can pretty much, it, it, well, it's just like being in the room as opposed to, to looking at a screen. So it just gives you that sort of more immersive experience basically. With, with VR, it's kind of difficult to give you the real experience through the camera, you just can't. But if you ever come to you know, an exhibition like this or you have a chance to use it, um, you'll, you'll get the fully immersive experience because yeah. you, you can literally look around and what you were doing earlier when well, you were trying to walk yeah, I was around trying to walk around <laughs> yeah it's kind of funny and uh, if we if we go to here this, this is something that was really interesting to us actually so using 5g now you've got companies that are building these sort of little devices and basically what these are like this one here you can put three SD cards in, all on a 5G network. And then you plug your camera into the HDMI here, like your standard Sony camera or your Canon camera. And it allows you to live stream to a, a cloud and it will always pick the best signal. It will split the, the data between the three SIM cards. So hopefully using something like this, you will get very high quality, um, high definition, live, you know, live streaming basically so this is actually something we need to look into yeah because you know when you watch our streams at the moment sometimes they are glitching and that's because we're having to go through a vpn so if we were able to use this then we should be able to bring you some pretty damn good quality live streams so yeah so we're, we're going to look into that we're going to need to look into those good yeah, yeah. justin you can be in the video mate yeah. justin here nice just, to meet you. just I'm your big fan. just recognized us and uh, came to say hello he's working on this uh Door, this stand here uh, yeah. with China Unicom. So, yeah, very good to meet you, Thank Justin. You. Thank you for coming to say hello to us. Hi. And you'll find yourself in the video. Thank nice you. to meet you, man. Thanks, Justin. So, in the last couple of days, there's been a case of coronavirus found here in Shanghai in a, a sort of small village. And because of that, at this Huawei, China really take COVID very, very seriously indeed. We've been offered a free coronavirus test and it's what, what's the time now? It's like about midday now. Yeah. And we're going to go and get this test and we should have our um, result later tonight, by, by before midnight apparently. So uh, just filled out the form and uh, we're going there to do it right now. This is where we're going to get our test done. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, well, that was way better than I thought. It wasn't anywhere near what I thought it was going to I thought it was going to be quite painful, but it wasn't at all. Uh, okay, okay. That's the worst one. <laughs> done. Oh. Oh, yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's good, isn't it, man? That it really is, yeah. is good. Like, that just is good. <laughs> the last test I had was in March. And the second test I'm having is on my birthday in November. Okay, so. So we're all done, and we'll be back with you when we get our Follow. results. So we scanned the QR code, and they've said tonight. Put in our phone number and it'll give us the results on our phone. How about that? So quick. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That is very, very that good. That is really good. And that, that is why we feel safe being in China, you know? Anyway, we'll check back in when we get our results and let you know how we get on. Okay, so here we've got um, a selection of more industrial type of cameras. And as you can see from, from these, these are cameras that, that transmit directly onto the 5G network. Now, the main thing about these is if, if you take this one here, this is a 4K high definition camera and that can feed images back in real time so you can use these in many, many different scenarios and the way it works, they will feed a, a, a live image back to a, a cloud computing system and then they, in pretty much real time, they can analyse those images 
and use AI on those images to, to pick up like traffic violations. They can pick up sort of strange behavior of, of you know, people. Um, you could monitor, let, let, I'll give you a scenario. Let's say you're on the Metro and you get off the Metro and you've left your bag on there. Well, what you can do, you can contact customer services they can then look at that video in real time or just, just rewind five minutes to when you lost your bag. And they can actually see there and then where your bag is. So they can maybe alert staff at the next station or the station after that to go on and, and retrieve your bag for you. Or if somebody's picked it up, they can then trace where those people who've picked it up have taken it to or what they've done with it. So th things like scenarios like this where previously they would have had to wait for the train to get into a station or at the end of the day and download the footage and then scan through the footage. Now they can do it all in real time due to 5G and the low latency that they, they're able to transmit high definition images in real time basically. Yeah and just a thought I want to add on to that is like you know this is something where more cameras can be a really great thing whereas it, the perception you know, for a lot of people outside of China is just that more cameras is to control people more. Yeah. But I've had times, I've lost my phone about four times in China and every time it's been retrieved. And that wouldn't happen if it wasn't down to, you know, having a lot of cameras. So these kinds of things, when you do have something where it can benefit you, then you really understand that, oh, okay it's not so bad to have so many cameras around and they act as a deterrent to steal they act as a deterrent to commit crimes so anyway. just, just one other thing like like these cameras in a traffic scenario they have these cameras at many junctions and intersections so the ai can detect an accident and if an accident is detected that then automatically you know enables road signs and, and traffic flow signs so they can then divert traffic other ways so you don't get so much traffic in there. So there's, there's massive sort of advantages of using this, this type of technology because it's the low latency of 5G allows it all to be real time, um, which is just, just massive really. And you, you need to understand the, the benefit of that. So it is the next day. This is, uh, don't be confused we're just uh, putting the insert in about the covid test because we've got the results i know what the results going to be already because i'm pretty sure if we were positive then we would have definitely been contacted <laughs> yeah, by yeah, this yeah, point and not just left to our own devices so i've got my my results here um it's all a bit chinese which is not so easy to understand but i've got a stamp there that says biomedical something so that's Where a good sign the so I've just whacked that into the WeChat Translate feature and as you can see there, negativo. Happy mm, days. I, I ain't getting anywhere. COVID free. That's what you want. That we were going places, turning the memories fading. It goes around like trouble. It all grew into hating. Clouds are rolling in Rain rolls down my cheek Thoughts and God save me But I'm left with my